Ready or not, here it comes. Whether you like it or not, we welcome the designated hitter to the National League. Who should be the Cubs' mainstay in the spot in 2022? Locked on Cubs dives into that now. Happy Friday. <laughs> Are Locked On Cubs, your daily Chicago Cubs podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Good morning, Locked On Cubs family, and a happy, happy Friday to you. Welcome in to Locked On Cubs. I'm your host, Andrew Bellison. Thank you for taking the time to make Locked On Cubs your first listen each and every morning. And I know I say it, it's part of the script. However, given the lockout and the way the offseason has gone and how things have progressed moving into 2022 baseball season, having you guys here still as part of the Locked On family just means so much to me. It's been a weird offseason. It's been a weird year. So having this back and forth and, and, and you part of this Lockdown family just is just so cool. Engage with us on social media. We love that. At Lockdown Cubs, at Chicago Cubs PA as well. We love to interact with you guys, the Lockdown fam, on social. So please reach out. Let us know your thoughts, concerns, feelings, et cetera, et cetera. Lockdown Cubs, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network. All Cubs, all the time. Awesome stuff for you today. Happy Friday, first and foremost. Are you ready for the weekend? We're rolling in. If you don't know me, I don't blame you. I'm Andrew Bellison. I'm your host. I was the Wrigley Field public address announcer for 10 years before being hired by Lockdown Sports to host the Lockdown Cubs podcast, and I am just having so much fun with you guys. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. In-depth bullpen analysis today, as it stands now, and the 2022 Zips projections for what that pen's going to look like for David Ross and crew when we do get to baseball, hopefully sooner rather than later. Got a bunch of news, notes, tidbits. Who's going to be calling Cubs games on Marquee Sports Network in 2022? We'll examine that as well. But first, it's designated hitter time at Wrigley. First and foremost, and I, I don't know where you stand on this, I'd like to put a, a poll question up on Twitter, and I think I'm going to do that um, because I'd love, love to see your feedback of where you're at on this. I I don't like it. Not that my opinion matters, but I'm somewhat of a purist. Um, missing the bullpens down the lines at Wrigley Field kind of purist. And I do feel that having pitchers hit in the National League is the right thing to do. It adds a different twist to the game compared to the American League. It makes a manager think once or twice as they look ahead in a lineup on any given day. I just like how the whole thing goes together. With that said, I'm no dummy, or at least I don't think. How does this affect the Cubs? Well, it's a good thing. Let's be honest. Um, it's a very good thing for the Cubs, in my opinion. We've spoken a lot this offseason about needing more pop in the lineup. Hence the Correa talks, a power left-handed bat, say a Suzuki, et cetera, et cetera. Well, here you go. Now is your chance. You got a free hitter to plug into the lineup and let them do their thing. And in that regard, you take advantage of this factor that's going to give you a competitive advantage. So you you have to assume there's going to be a fair amount of regulars, we'll call them, that are going to take their turn in the designated hitter slot for David Ross this season. Frank Schwindel, Patrick Wisdom, uh, Wilson Contreras, certainly to spot him a few days behind the plate and get Jan Gomes back there and keep Wilson's legs fresh heading towards the end of the season. But that got us thinking, who are a few other candidates potentially that could slot in and take over that role more permanently in 2022? Harold Ramirez is an intriguing option. He was a, an international free agent signing originally by the Pirates way back in 2011, made his major league debut with the Marlins in 2019. Um, in an extended look that year, back two, three years ago in 2019, he, he had a pretty good year, 276, 312 on base percentage, 
416 slugging, 11 homers, 50 ribbies, played in 119 games. Um, the cool statistic about him or in regards to Ramirez is he finished in the 88th percentile for hard hit rate at like 47% clip, um, which is which is awesome. So he's not a guy that's going to walk a ton. In fact, he rarely walks. Last season, uh, walked less than 4% of the time. So he's a free swinger. But he also struck out less than 16% of the time. Um, so he puts the ball in play and likes to swing the bat. If you're a designated hitter, you like those numbers, right? I mean, that's that's pretty favorable, especially on this roster. Option number two for David Ross, and again, he's got a bunch of them, but this is very intriguing to me, is Clint Frazier. We haven't talked enough about Frazier, I don't think, since him and the Yankees decided to part ways. I love this. There's a ton of intrigue here for me. Uh, very minimal risk, even given his injury history. Um, I love the signing, and he's a great candidate to plug in that designated hitter spot. In 2019, he played in a career-high 69 games, and he played in place of injured players and had a really good year, 267, 317 on base, slugged almost 500, hit 12 homers, and drove in 38 RBIs. That's in just 69 games. So, I mean, the pop is there. We know what kind of talent this guy has. He was, like, poised to grab a, a, a full-time starting spot with the Yankees last year, but then suffered from those concussion-like symptoms that he battled for a large portion of the season, and then eventually left a ball game in June with dizziness and was shut down for the rest of the year. So he didn't play well in the 66 games last year, hit just a buck 86, five homers, 15 ribbies, um, and a negative wins above replacement, the lowest of his career. But we know the talent is far, far supersedes what the body work showed in 2021. Um, Again, we don't love the projections here at Lockdown Cubs, but they're fun to look at. The Fangraphs projections have the 27-year-old coming into a nice bounce back year with the Cubs. Uh, they show him at a 231, 317 on base, 414 slugging slash line with 13 homers, 41 ribbies in 100 games. So limited stints in the majors, a lot of injury history. The concussion thing is a concern. Um, he's... Always shown the ability to get on base, Clint Frazier. Nearly a 15% walk rate last year, which is awesome. By the same token, he strikes out a lot, nearly 30% last year, which is obviously too high. I think, you know, you get him healthy and you get him regular at bats, which is probably going to be best suited in the designated hitter role, but we're going to see him in the outfield as well. I do. I think a bounce back here could be really good, and he could blossom into the guy that we all kind of thought he would be and and – saw him as being before the injury concerns. Here's an intriguing one. Uh, one of the regulars that we already mentioned, he's going to get turns in this role regardless. But Frank Schwindel, um, we talked on Lockdown Cubs not that long ago about bringing Anthony Rizzo back and that there was legitimate linkage between the two parties. That would be cool, right? So you bring, say you bring a Rizzo back, Moving Schwindel and all that power to a designated hitter role is kind of a no-brainer. Um, the, the sample size from Schwindel in 2021, while very productive, was super limited. 56 games only after the Rizzo deal. Um, almost 30 years old. I mean, he mashed last year. 342, 13 long balls, drove in 40 in 56 games. I mean, that's that's crazy. Um, limited track record at the big league level, however. But... If you're slotting someone else in, such as a lefty, power-hitting, veteran, friendly face like Rizzo, well, that's a no-brainer then for Schwindel to take a bulk of the bats at the designated hitter role too, right? Um, glove was a concern at first base anyways. So, I mean, it kind of just kind of would work out perfect if there's a Rizzo-Cubs reunion on top of all that, which would be awesome as well. Another outside candidate that – we think might potentially be floated out there because the Jays in Toronto are talking about moving him as Randall Gritchick. And we're familiar with Gritchick because of his time in St. Louis spent man, 14, 15, 16 and 17 with the Redbirds um, always hit well, seemingly at Wrigley field. I know a lot of Cardinals typically have done that, but uh, Gritchick huge power numbers went to Toronto in 2019 and has, you know, had three really good years there as well. Although last year would probably be considered a down year. Uh, his best year, I would say came 
I mean, home run wise, 2019, his first year in Toronto, hit 31 and drove an 80. Last year, he knocked in 81 as well, hit 241, 22 homers, 25 doubles. Um, the guy can hit and he could play a little outfield as well. He'd be a holdover until Brennan Davis is ready. And the Cubs have the financial flexibility to absorb some of his $20 million salary, which would be one of the caveats, obviously, if a deal was made with the Blue Jays and anybody. So that's an intriguing intriguing outside option as well. Obviously, post-lockout, because you can't do anything now, but something, uh, something we'll keep an eye on. So tons of options. You know David Ross has smoke coming out of his ears, but he doesn't even know what his roster is going to necessarily look like in finality yet. So be interesting to see how all this shakes out. I love it. We got to get we got to get past this lockout and get back to the business of baseball. Who's closing games for the Cubs in 2022? That's awfully important. Is it not? We'll take a look at that coming up here shortly. Before we get there, have you tried the new Built Bar Puffs yet? If you haven't, you're missing out. It's one of Built Bar's best tasting bars. They're fluffy. They're marshmallowy. They're not just a protein bar. They're literally like a treat. They're a fan favorite because of the awesome flavors. They've got cinnamon churro. They've got coconut marshmallow. They've got banana cream pie. And all Built Bars are covered in 100% real chocolate. Yes, the Puffs too. 100% real chocolate. They're healthy. They're good, full of protein, only 130 calories, 4 grams of sugar, 4 grams of net carbs. The protein count, 17 grams. Blows the top off of a normal junky garbage candy bar. Go to Built.com. Use promo code LOCKED15, get 15% off your order. Promo code LOCKED15 at built.com today. You won't regret it. Locked on Cubs rolls on next. Welcome back into Locked on Cubs. I'm your host, Andrew Bellison. Thank you for taking the time to be with us today at Locked on Cubs on Twitter at Chicago Cubs PA, please reach out to us, engage with us. Let's talk baseball. Let's talk Cubs. Let's talk lockout. What's on your mind? Thank you for taking the time each and every morning, wherever you're going to work, to school, maybe you're home, maybe you're laying in bed for making us your first listen. From the bottom of my heart, I appreciate it. I mean that sincerely. That is not part of the script. I'm telling you that because I mean it. Check us out on YouTube as well. Locked on Cubs YouTube channel. You can watch the show if you'd rather as well. We've been doing some fun stuff over there. So please, please check us out. So Zips, bullpen projections, 2022 Cubs. We've run through the infield, the outfield, the starting rotation. Bullpen, I mean, let me preface this by saying there's not a team in Major League Baseball that doesn't want bullpen help always. It's just how it goes. That's how it goes. They've got zips, meaning the Cubs slotting up seven guys in the bullpen as it stands right now. Um, and we'll run through those here for you. And let me know what you think. Cody Hoyer, Rowan Wick, Scott Efros, Manuel Rodriguez, Brad Wick, Michael Rucker, and Keegan Thompson. Now, in next week's show, we're going to be taking a look at some bubble guys who could slot into the pen as well. I mean, listen, the bullpen is so important. We talked about this. The success the Cubs had early in 2021 hinged on that bullpen with Tapera and Kimbrell and Chafin. They were damn good. And then when the, the, the trade deadline came and, and those guys were gone, we saw the difference. So, I mean, obviously, you cannot overstate bullpen help. You can't. I mean, it's just – it is so important. With Cody Hoyer um, – he was part of the Kimbrel deal with the White Sox last summer, okay? He was a sixth-round pick in 2018, posted a combined 428 ERA with 56 strikeouts and 67 and a third innings between the two clubs a year ago. Batters don't square him up very often, which is obviously what you're looking for out of the bullpen, any arm, but especially out of the pen. Uh, he was within the top 7% of the league last year with a four and a half barrel percentage, which is awesome for a reliever. Secondary pitches are really filthy, but batters hit 336 off his fastball last year, which obviously not going to work. Um, if he can fine tune that fastball and locate it, command it with the velocity that he has, he can be a really effective arm out of the pen for the Cubs, and they need him. Cody Hoyer, Zips has him projected. 68 innings, 371 ERA, 64 strikeouts. So that would be that would be very serviceable. 
Rowan Wick stepped into the closer's role after the Kimbrell trade last year, and he left a lot to be desired from the previous two years, essentially. Um, in 2021, he had a 430 ERA, 29 strikeouts, and 23 innings of work. Sounds pretty good, right? Well, the splits, first half, second half, would dictate otherwise. Um, he did have the propensity to walk a few guys, over five guys per nine. You know, if he can hone in on the control, he can make a complete transition into a permanent ninth inning guy. And having him here with that opportunity is huge. I'm excited to see what Hoyer can do. Zips has him, uh, what we can do, I, I apologize. Zips has him just over 40 innings, 374 ERA, 51 strikeouts. We'll see what role he kind of falls in. It always takes the bullpen a couple of weeks or a month to kind of shuffle itself out at the start of any season, doesn't it? You see guys get set into roles and comfortable, and then things sort of take off. So it'll be interesting to see, first of all, who's down there and out there, and then how David Ross manages that group. Um, another interesting guy that we mentioned from the pen, Keegan Thompson. He had an amazing first half of 2021. Buck 64 ERA, 22 appearances, made a spot start for Ross, but the wheels fell off in the second half. Uh, 620 earned run average, 10 appearances, made five starts. Now, part of that could be attributed to the differing roles. And, I mean, that's a totally different approach. Bullpen to starting rotation. And when you're making 10 appearances in the second half, five in the, in the rotation, five out of the pen because the team needs you, it doesn't make things any easier. Um, 26 years old, great splits as a reliever, though. Opponents, 206 average and 37 innings of work. Most importantly, uh, Thompson limited batters to a 196 batting average with runners, runners in scoring position, which is awesome. So I'm really excited for Thompson out of the pen this year. I hope he remains in the pen. I hope he get comfortable in his role out of the pen because I think he could be a really, really important piece uh, of that puzzle. Now, again... This is all contingent upon what happens with the back end of the rotation. And we examined the rotation the other day. You know what you're looking at top three. You got Hendricks, you got Stroman, and you got Wade Miley. So who slots in at the back end? Well, we said Braylon Marquez. I'm sorry, Adbra Alzali and Alec Mills. Then you got some swing guys, that, which we're going to talk about next week, the Braylon Marquez's that could fall into the mix. So depending on how that rotation shakes out you're going to see the flux move into the pen and whatnot do the cubs go outside the organization for more bullpen help do you want to invest money in free agent relievers slash closers depending on the value I, that always scares me you seemingly give big deals to closers who have good track records that come in and then things go sour it's not always the case but investing a ton of money in Back end of the bullpen guys always just scared me. And maybe that's a stupid take to have. It's just kind of how I feel. There are plenty of options out there still. Guys looking for homes this year once the lockout ends. Kenley Jansen obviously leading the pack, kind of resurrecting himself last year with the Dodgers. At an advanced age, had an unbelievable year. And I think he threw more innings than he ever had in his career, which again, coming off that is a little scary. Colin McHugh is an intriguing uh, top tier, we'll call him, back into the bullpen guy. What about reunions? And we talked about this way back last year, but Andrew Chafin and Ryan Tapera, I mean, having those guys back in the fold would be awesome. Very possible to get maybe one of the two even, if not both. So those old friends, to name a few, could really round out the pen. Again, not sure how the budget is prepped necessarily in regards to arms with miles on them for the middle and back end of the bullpen. But we'll have to see how, how that's crafted as we get towards the rest of the offseason post-lockout and spring training as well. Who's going to be calling games on Marquee Sports Network for the Cubs in 2022? We'll discuss that momentarily. Football season might be over, but basketball's in full steam, both pro and college hoops. From all the latest odds, totals, player performance props, to where the next fired coach is going to land, BetOnline.net is the number one spot for all of your sports betting needs. BetOnline remains the best spot for all of your sports scores, podcasts, 
and news all season long. And it's not just basketball. BetOnline.net is your source for hockey, for boxing, UFC, all the way to Olympic coverage and information. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to, to mobile device to learn more about the trends and action. Bet online where the game starts. Locked on Cubs continues next. Welcome back into Locked On Cubs. I'm your host, Andrew Bellison. Thank you for being with us today. Happy, happy Friday to you as we get set to roll into the weekend. You ready? Got any big plans? Behave yourself and be safe. So kind of fun tidbit on Twitter. Yesterday, we dedicated the show to the roster, uh, the Zips projections of the starting rotation, looked at Marcus Stroman, looked at Hendricks, looked at Miley, et cetera, et cetera. And we wondered, hey, is Stroh the opening day starter for the 2022 Cubs? And on Twitter, he replied to us and said, Hendricks is the man. He can't wait to take the ball on day two. I love that. I'm a huge Strowman fan, always have been. Marcus, thank you for taking the time to reach out to our tweet. Um, just really cool. I love what you're all about. You seem like you have an awesome vibe, super present. I mean, Hell of a pitcher. That's a good group, man, that they've got that rotation. So that was really cool. Uh, he's he's anointed the professor as the opening day guy in 2022, which is awesome. We've been spoiled with the Cubs in terms of broadcasters. We have had some dandies from Brick House to Harry to Pat Hughes to Lou Boudreau, Vince Lloyd, Len Casper, Bob Brenly in the analyst chair, Sano, Coomer, et cetera, et cetera. Who's going to be in the Cubs TV booth in 2022? Spoiler alert, familiar faces. Boog Shambi and Jim Deshays are back. Did you hear the news? On Tuesday, Marquee Sports Network announced that it reached a multi-year deal with the two uh, to continue in the Cubs television booth for 2022 and beyond. Shambi said that he couldn't be more excited to continue being part of the Marquee and Cubs families going forward. He said, there's nothing better than calling Wrigley Field home and broadcasting for the best fans in the game. Well, we're spoiled to have John because he is about as smooth as it gets. Loved him for, for all the work that he's done. He's got a very long and impressive resume. Do you know his history? You probably heard him on ESPN as well before he came to Marquee last year. Uh, worked with ESPN since 2010. He's the voice of Sunday Night Baseball for ESPN Radio. Prior to the Cubs, called games for the Marlins for a long time and the Braves as well. So I don't know if you knew that or not. As for J.D., one of the best in the business. Funny, knowledgeable, just an awesome guy, first and foremost. And believe it or not, this is his 10th season in the Cubs booth. You believe that? Followed 16 years in the same role for Houston after playing in the majors. Um for 12 years from 1984 to 1995. J.D. said that he's thrilled to continue his relationship with Marquee Sports Network and the Cubs. This has been and continues to be a dream job for me, and it's a joy to settle up alongside Boo. So good stuff. You know, we're lucky. Uh, these two are amazing individually. They're amazing together. It's a big deal here for us Cubs fans, and I will say this. Um, I am, as a fan, very happy to have them back in the television booth for years to come. Happy Friday. Happy weekend. We made it. Thank you for being part of Locked On Cubs here today and taking a look at the bullpen with me and the TV booth and the designated hitter as well. More roster projections and evaluations and CBA updates and lockout updates next week. Until then, enjoy your weekend. Thanks for being part of Locked On Cubs Nation. Thank you for making us your first listen as well. Now we ask you to make Locked On Bets your second listen. It's your daily one-stop shop for all of your gambling needs. Hosted by your boy Q with expert analysis and insight from Lee Sterling. It's free and available wherever you download your favorite podcast, just like Locked On Cubs. Happy Friday. Happy weekend. We'll see you next week.